All of our little onion seed experiments are gonna go in the ground as well. We have lots to do, so let's get a move on. We're gonna start here in the back row in the center. This is where I like to plant the cabbage. We have our red acre cabbage, our golden acre cabbage, and also the all season cabbage. And this is our bolted broccoli, which we'll get to later. So let's get started on our cabbage. back row we have our cabbage bed I have them all spaced out accordingly they're about 12 to 16 inches apart the front here is the red acre cabbage with just a few in the middle and the green cabbage on this side is the golden acre and the green cabbage on this side is the all season so I will dig them in with my hori hori and then we will use the organic plus fertilizer from Kellogg's we'll sprinkle that in as we plant <laughs> back it has grown tremendously I am gonna plant this cabbage right next to it for now I am planning on moving this chamomile I'm just not quite sure where I want it yet so for now they're gonna be really close neighbors to see moving on to onions check them out they are so puny <laughs> uh, that's why they're called onion sea experiments right what's gardening without having a little fun and experimenting and that's exactly what we are doing I'm gonna gently separate these apart pull the roots apart the best I can and I'll plant them in the soil probably about three to four inches apart first I'm gonna go through and grab all these weeds out and then we'll get planting on these I'm going to use this rake to break up the soil a little bit so it's nice and loose soil for when we plant the onions. These onions are from the onion seed experiment that we started back in February. These ones were kept in the greenhouse. I will link the video below if you'd like to catch up. grass blades. So our onions are all in this bed. That was quite a lot. We did about a tray and three quarters or so. 
We have about a quarter left of the Red Bull onions. I'm gonna save these for later. Uh, we're supposed to get some rain tonight, so I kinda wanna see how these do before I plant the rest of the onion seed experiments. So let's move on to cauliflower. Romanesco. We're doing good, you guys. <laughs> More progress. I wanted to plant my broccoli in this bed. However, I went through them and a lot of them have already bolted. There's only a few here that are salvageable. Um, luckily, though, I do have some cauliflowers and some Romanescos, and I think there's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple cabbages in here as well, so that'll help fill in this bed. So I ended up not putting cabbage here, but I have four of the Desicchio broccoli. There's four of the Romanescos, and then the rest is gonna be the Early Girl Snowball Cauliflower. Looks like I need to thin that out. This one too. about that but eventually we'll get peppers but as of right now they're still just like little teeny tiny little seedlings I don't know this is like the first year I've had that problem so if you have any advice or tips that would be much appreciated I'm doing everything that I did the same last couple years and it's just completely different results so I'm not really sure what's going on with that but in the meantime we're gonna utilize this bed and plant these extra plants we have So we actually have more broccoli than I thought. I thought this was cabbage for some reason. Um, it's actually the green sprouting calabrese broccoli. So we'll just put these back here with the rest of the cauliflower and the bok choy. So it does look like a couple of our bok choys are going to seed. They're starting to bolt already. Um, this has happened to me before. I never really have great luck with bok choy and I really like it and I do feed it to my dogs. But man, I have a really hard time growing it. So if you live in the Pacific Northwest and you are successful with bok choy, let me know what you do. I would really appreciate that. Merlot and some butter crunch and I have a couple of the blue curly kale that will also go in this row too. And I'm gonna plant them here on the other side of the tomatoes at that way hopefully it'll keep them from bolting because they will get some afternoon shade once the tomatoes grow. Scratch that we're gonna put 
the kale somewhere else. I forgot that I will have tomatoes over here. And I don't really wanna put my brassicas next to the tomatoes because they are really heavy feeders, the brassicas are. So I will put these somewhere else. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll find a spot for them. I think I found a spot for them for now. This is where they were last year and it's close to the house because I do use the kale in my smoothies most mornings. So I think for now this will work. These are lettuces that I planted, I think in like September or October of last year. They were just extras that were in the greenhouse and I just threw them out here just to see what would happen. And they barely survived all winter long and they've just taken off here the last few weeks. tomorrow and we're gonna go check on our compost as well and give that a flip so I'll see you then we're a couple days later it has been raining like crazy the last few days so I decided to hold off planting until today we kind of had this nice sunny overcast day and I also wanted to see how our onions fared after all the rain, and they look pretty good. So we have about a quarter of our 10, 20 tray left of the onions, plus two little of the little plastic containers that I saved from the grocery store, full of onions as well. So we're gonna start on those today. Next, I'm gonna go through and gently rake this up so it's really easy and loose dirt to plant the onions. These are also from our onion seed experiments. These are the ones that we kept outside. I think what I'm gonna do is stop at the halfway part here on this 20 foot bed. And they are, these ones are super tiny. They're a lot smaller than these ones. Plus we have our onion sets, so I think we'll have plenty of onions. And I am running out of space here in my raised bed, so I'd like to save the rest of this half for something else. the garden and I'm gonna place all of the sunflowers there's some marigolds I have a couple dills and cilantro and I also found some extra Romanesco so we're gonna have to find a spot for those too are from the seeds that we found outside and germinated. I can link that video below if you missed us finding and starting these seeds. So the rest of the plants here in the trailer are mostly flowers and I'm gonna put them here in our raised bed next to the greenhouse. This is my cut flower bed. I planted all of this lamb's ear last year from seed and it has just taken off like crazy. I should have split it this year, but now I'm a little late, so I'll have to remember to do that for next year. But isn't it beautiful? We have our stock and bunny tails. So I had to come down here and find some shade. What we're gonna do is wait to plant all of our plants we're gonna go down to the compost pile because there's actually shade down there right now. Work smarter, not harder. And then we'll come back up and plant all of our plants here in the flower bed and also in the garden when the sun sets and it gets a little cooler out. So let's go. So 
So as you can see, our compost pile has decreased in size by about half, which is a great thing. That means everything is working and things are breaking down. And it's been about nine days and our temperature is dropping. We are still in the active zone around 120 degrees, but this last week we've been in the hot zone at about 150. So this is a great time to flip this so we can get this activated and get going again. What I like to do is take the material that's not in the middle that's active. I like to take the stuff from the outside first and pile that so that has a chance to break down. And I also brought the water, so we're gonna hydrate this as we go. planted yesterday the Sun did delay us a little bit for planting but we were able to get our compost pile flip so that was a good thing and my husband ended up getting off work early yesterday so we made our irrigation a priority we don't have it set up yet because we do drain it every year after our growing season that way the water can't stay in the pipes and freeze over the winter and cause leaks or breaks so yesterday we checked all the lines, we put pressure to the whole system to make sure nothing was leaking, flushed all the lines out and reconnected everything, making sure to put screens on each connection. This keeps the emitters clean and from clogging up. We have well water, so this is very important for us. We also made adjustments to each emitter and changed out any that weren't working. Needless to say, the plants did not get planted last night, but we are ready to do that today. It's a nice cool morning, so let's get going on that. And while we're down here, I want to show you what the temperature is doing on our compost pile. So it's only been about 16 hours since we turned this pile and it's already up to about 110 degrees, which is a great thing. So we'll try to stay on top of this and flip this again in a couple days. Now that you're up to date on our compost pile, let's go up to the garden and get our plants in the ground. We are going to start here at the cut flower bed. We're planting all of our bunny tails, stock, double dutch cosmos, seashells, gomfrina, alyssum, and agaratum. I do have quite a few dahlias in this bed, so I'm strategically planting to avoid digging and gouging any of my dahlia tubers. I'm already seeing a little bit of growth from them, so stay tuned for those beauties. They're one of my favorites. That feels super great to get this all planted. And my goal with these seashells and also the double dutch is to have them kind of like spill over the edges, so we'll see how that goes. But everything's planted and good to go. We have lots of empty containers, which is what I like to see. Here we are planting the Aunt Molly's ground cherries by this arched cattle panel trellis. So they have something to climb on. Eventually this bed will be home to all of our cucumbers. These are the teddy bear sunflowers. And there's so much little volunteer dills that we're gonna leave alone. Here's the Romanescos. We're gonna plant them here in this bed that's kind of been the miscellaneous collect all bed, which will eventually be peppers. So this is the bed I like to put my cantaloupe in. However, it's still a little cool out for cantaloupe. And in the meantime, I'm gonna plant my cilantro around the border. That way the cilantro will have time to grow and by the time it bolts and it's too hot for the cilantro, the cantaloupe will have lots of room to grow. Same with this bed. This is where we'll be planting our watermelon. But in the meantime, we are gonna put our dill here. We will wait until the nights are consistently in the lower 60s before we plant out our watermelon and cantaloupe. I love planting lots of flowers around the garden. It's great for your garden's ecosystem, attracting lots of beneficial bugs, hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies. Marigolds are one of my favorites to add to the garden. They are so easy to grow and are beautiful to look at. 
Well, we finally did it. We got a good portion of our plants planted and we got over 430 grass blades, I mean onions, planted as well. I hope we get at least a couple of those forming good bulbs this year. And it's gonna be a really nice afternoon, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrub up all of our containers and get those dried out and put away for next year. And you guys know the drill. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.